All right, guys, this is Four Points, where four meteorologists come together to talk and maybe argue a little bit <laughs> about the buzziest topic in the world of weather. And, of course, this time of the year, that typically has to do with something in the tropics. And, well, right now, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Invest 97L, which is a tropical disturbance off the African coast. We're expecting it to become a hurricane. If it does become a hurricane, which it likely will, it would be named Aaron. Remember, we just had Dexter, so Aaron with an E. If you start hearing us say Aaron, you'll know what we're talking about. So we talked about will it become a hurricane and, and what could happen with it. Now it's sort of set in stone. I think we all kind of agreed after yesterday that it will become a hurricane. Now we're trying to figure out where it could go. So that's the wave. That's 97L. Here's an ensemble of the GFS and the Euro model runs. It's a bunch of different model runs that change one little variable and send the model on its way. And this cluster right here, fairly grouped together until about this point, until it gets just to the north of the Lesser Antilles Island chain. And then all bets are kind of off. You see how it starts to spread out. So some of those centers of low go to the north and curve right out into the sea. Some of them put it more on a trajectory right towards the east coast. And heck, a couple take them right across the Caribbean and possibly into the Gulf. And we're all split on what we think could happen with this. I personally think, rightly so, that it's going <laughs> to curve and stay a fish storm and head out to sea like a big cluster of those areas of low pressure do. So that's my personal opinion. We're just kind of setting the stage here. Bain, what are you thinking? You know, I, I, I disagree. I think we are going to see it impacting the United States. I think it's going to make landfall somewhere. I'm going to cheat a little bit and okay. say very vague somewhere on the Atlantic coast, somewhere on the East coast. But the reason I think this is because normally this time of year, when we have that high pressure system over the Atlantic, it's strong. I mean, it's, it's very strong in that way that we're, it can steer some of those stronger storms, those hurricanes and push them more towards the Western uh, Atlantic basin. So part of the Atlantic basin and I think this could end up developing a little bit towards the north, potentially near the Carolinas. And also on top of this, we have some very warm water to work with. Yeah. So I think it has plenty of fuel to get things going. Okay. And then once it does get going, I think it'll shift okay, to the listen, north and actually hit landfall. You're allowed to cheat, but I need you to split it up between north mm. of North Carolina Ooh. or south of North Carolina. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, you have okay. to, Ooh. You have to do good. something. What about right in the middle? No, uh, no, that's okay, exactly fine, what you can't fine. do. Okay, I'll, I'll go I'll go north. I'll go North Carolina. North Carolina yeah. or, or or point north. Yeah. Points north. Okay, north. Uh, yeah. Michael, what are you thinking? That's, that's a really interesting interesting uh, thought process there, Bain, because I, I see what you're saying. Here's my thoughts when it comes to the system with Invest 97L. So I think that it actually takes a southerly track. So when you set the models into motion, I think this thing moves from east to west in this sort of fashion, but stays further toward the south, so I'll, my, my big L that you see here is what I'm projecting. It moves over the Lesser Antilles, perhaps even over Dominican Republic, Cuba, Haiti, perhaps even the Bahama Islands before perhaps emerging into the Gulf of Mexico. The reasoning behind my thought process on this is just because I think this is going to be a, a weaker system. A weaker system is going to stay toward the south. It won't curve as quickly. A stronger system will curve. The reason for it is just because there's a lot of dust. And this dust, I think, suppresses its development in this region. So it stays toward the south. I look at the water temperatures out this way, too. And the water temperatures are, like, lukewarm. They're not really warm in between this zone here. So I think that this thing doesn't really strengthen until, you know, after that point. And then we're off to the races. But I think it'll be too, too late for this thing to strengthen okay. and to curve up. So you think it stays even south of Florida? I think it, yeah. Well, I think it could cut right through Florida, to be honest with you, before hopping into the Gulf. All because, right. again, here it is. You know, the water temperatures are in the 70s in spots. It's not until you're here yeah. that we're in the 80s until it really strengthens. And that, that becomes much more conducive. All right, last but not least, Haley, what you got? 
You're right, Nick. I'm not the least. I'm the best <laughs> in this scenario because I am fully confident in what I'm feeling, although the models are disagreeing with me right now, but I'm my own forecast model. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so what I'm projecting here is that 97L is going to hug the main development region. It's already transporting enough moisture. I think it will strengthen sooner than what some of the forecast models think. And I, I feel like that happens all the time where we are kind of slow and steady with things, and then all of a sudden, stuff really starts to take off. So I predict we'll get a tropical depression or storm by around Wednesday. Now, because of this, I do think it will take that northerly jog between that high pressure. However, I think it's going to cut to the north of the Bahamas, but it is going to get close to the Carolina coast. So my prediction is that we are going to get a glancing landfall for somewhere along the Carolina coast. Could be North Carolina, could be South Carolina. I favor a little bit north into North Carolina. And then eventually it gets drugged back out into the North Atlantic and makes an extra tropical transition. Can, okay, can we stop the graphics right here, Michael? Yeah. I, so this is essentially what we have to figure out is this high pressure split situation. Mm -hmm. So in your prognostication, these two areas, of high, there isn't a split. So right. if these stay close, that would make that conveyor belt, like you said, go through the Caribbean and into the Gulf. And that's that's essentially what you're banking on. That's what Michael's banking that's on. That's what at Michael's that point. banking yeah. on. Right. And by the way, we just received word that the uh, National Hurricane Center, they issue, you know, the two day outlook versus the seven day outlook. They've just increased that now mm -hmm. to a forty percent chance mm -hmm. of development in the next 48 hours. Yeah. So they think 48 yeah. hours, stronger. I mean, just tell me I'm right, Michael, without telling me I'm right. <laughs> well, they now, do it, the way they do it is it's very incremental. They don't make huge leaps and right. jumps, right? So this is, they trend up or down, and this is just the trend in growing confidence. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I don't know if you were getting information in your ear, Michael. Uh, yeah, we're going to update that in you, just a second. Could you hear what it. I was saying, though? About no, I did not hear you what you were okay, saying. Okay, so you think both of those areas of high pressure stay together, they don't split, and it keeps 97L and or Aaron south. And that's and that's the logic there. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking is that that will keep our, our tropical system, which could be Aaron at that point, south and on that southerly trajectory. So it takes it this way. And again, the, the newest update, this is what I was just talking about just a moment ago. They've upped it now to 40% in the next 48 hours. But I think it just stays further toward the south. It doesn't uh, encounter the most favorable environments until much later in the work week. Yeah. Then it becomes a tropical storm, then it becomes a hurricane, but by that point it's too late to curve up toward the north. Hmm. Therefore, it slides right through the Lesser Antilles, possibly having a Florida impact before jumping uh, into the Gulf of America. That's what I think as of this point based on especially what's called the AI, the ECMWF yeah. model. Right, well, you've heard from us. You've heard our four points. Let's get a fifth point. Let's turn this into whatever shape five points is. I forget. Let's bring in Brian Norcross. Uh, oh he he <laughs> weighed on. in on this earlier. The king enters the chat. This is king is here. <laughs> <laughs> he said this one, 97L, has the best chance of organizing into a tropical storm or hurricane of any system this season, which, yes, we all agree to that one. Mm -hmm. um, he also mentioned as well that as this disturbance gets organized and tracks west, we'll watch to see how closely it hews to the 20-degree latitude mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, kind of a designation between the tropics and as you get further into the subtropics. So again, further north, a little more in interaction there. So that's Norcross's viewpoint, but he's still mm. a wait and seer. I think if it gets north of 20, I think that even strengthens my case that it curves out to sea. Yeah. That's pretty much what he just told me. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Put some money on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, you guys. Well, we're going to continue to watch all the tropics all season long. Fox Weather is your Hurricane HQ. We'll be right back.